Hello there! This is now my third video of a tutorial on how to write letters in your custom designs in Animal Crossing for things like your signs or flags and other things that might have lettering. So this is going to be my showcase of uppercase letters. Again, one of the boring ones. So if this is your first one of the three videos, please do catch the first one, which really shows the colors I pick and a basic strategy for making letters. I decided to make a second video which had all my lowercase letters and now this third video of the uppercase letters in case anyone wanted to use the designs I make as a reference. But please feel free to make your letters however you like. This is just for an idea. So what I've done is uh, gotten the same coloring from the previous, from the, I'm sorry, the previous videos and you know, kind of keeping things consistent. So again, I have that dark red background and this dark purple as a shading, or not as a shading, as sort of a shaping color. And then the this light, light, light pink as the actual letter color and a couple of different shades of that light pink that's darker to help make more definition for at least some of the letters. The capital letters I've discovered can be done in a whole different set of ways. I'm just going to show you a few that I do, but of course, as I mentioned, this is a type of approach that you can customize to however you like, and so you can make some very different letters uh, based on your own preference, and I think that's great. So let's start with an A. Uh, this is a very basic A, uh, what you would do normally for pixel art. And as you can see, it's really pointy. So if you want, you could try to soften it uh, by adding uh, this darker shaping color uh, to one of these corners, and it does soften it a little. I actually like to make my A a little lopsided, so I will actually make it like this. And then what I'll do is I'll take that shaping, that dark purple shaping color out of the corner to round out or smooth out that notch that was there, and then soften this edge a bit by adding that dark color to the corner. So it looks a little lopsided, but it, I, I don't know, I, I think it looks fuller, so that's how I do it. Uh, let's go ahead and do the B. I've already done the B for you in the first video. This is the one that's a little bit tougher, and if you come up with better than ideas than this, I'm all ears. So this is the one where I, I found that much darker uh, shade of that same very light pink, and just added to this section here or that little empty spot, which causes the programming to soften all the edges so it looks more like a bee. And I'll take this dark purple, add one to each corner here, again to soften, actually add it to the corners on the right here to soften the roundedness of the bee. C, a little bit more straightforward, which is nice. So again, looks kind of blocky here, but I, I take this dark purple as Again, I call it a shaping, shaping color, although I'm sure there are other names you could use. Just add one to each corner to round out the sharpness of those corners. Now let's work on the D. As I mentioned in my earlier video, I like to make my letters uh, five squares tall and three squares wide for the most part, although there are some ex exceptions, particularly with the lowercase letters. Uh, but obviously with, with some of these other couple of letters, you can actually make them wider if you like and add flourishes. What I've done is I made the D as one big large circle or square, and I'm shaping the corners here with the dark purple on the end. And that's how I make the D. E, or the D. <laughs> uh, and now for an E. Now this was like that T that I made in the in the first video, which is there's this little section, the little middle part of the E looks a little bit pointy because of the way that the program is softening it. So I take this middle gray color, add it to that middle so it looks a little sharper. And I add some of this dark purple in the spaces above and below that middle part of the E to make that even more prominent. And the same exact thing, the same concept with the F, so we might as well just do that here. Same stuff. 
See how that's all sort of blurry? Add that darker color and take that dark purple above and below. And it looks a little bit more like it, uh, the middle part of the F. And this is how I make my G, very similar to the C, but I give all of the emphasis to the bottom part. And rounding out the upper left corner, lower, lower left, and if you like, the lower right. And now the H. Okay, the H is fortunately very easy. That one can go without any commentary. Now the eye can be pretty simple if you like. It could be just a simple straight line like this. If you like to add the tops and bottoms, it gets a little bit more challenging. As you can see here, it makes the computer, or I guess the, the program wants to make a hourglass shape by softening those edges there, which is great if you want to make an alphabet shape, but not great if you, or not alphabet, make an hourglass shape, but not great if you want to make an eye. So I just fill in the ends with that darker color and it sharpens the ends there, so it looks a little bit more like an eye rather than the hourglass shape. And the J is similar. So go ahead and make a J. I'll round out the bottom right and the bottom left using that dark purple. And if you want to add that cap, same strategy with the, the darker gray there. Let's go ahead and do our K. Now this is a little bit more like a traditional uh, pixel art K. So we add, take that dark purple and just put it right here in the middle. Helps uh, smooth out those funny notches. I like to add a little flourish here to make it a little bit less uh, less square. There's that. And the L. Fortunately, not too complicated there. And let's go ahead and do an M. Again, another one of those letters that are going to make or be the exception where it's not three across because it's the wider letter. All right, the, the N is quite similar. This one ends up being four across. And what I'll do is I'll pick one of these not, I guess, notches to add my shaping color, dark purple, to smooth that out. So it's a little bit more connected. And fortunately, the O is what you would expect it to be. So taking that dark purple on each corner to round that out so it doesn't look like a square, and you've got your O, which is nice. And the P, very similar. Again, now taking that purple and rounding out these edges here on the right. The Q is also fairly straightforward here. Just adding that little extra one on the end there. I'm going to round out the corners by adding this dark purple on each corner. And there you have it. Now the R is going to be like the B, where it has a funny look to it. If you don't trick the the game from doing something different with its rounding out or smoothing properties. So again, taking this dark gray and putting it right in the center here, and taking the dark purple and rounding out at least that corner there. Now the S, fortunately the uppercase S is a lot easier than the lowercase S. It's just a matter of softening some of those edges. So there's the dark purple again. One on this corner, one on this corner, one on that corner, one on that corner. Now the T is the same problem that you had with the uppercase I. It looks like a funny shape, kind of like a, it's like kind of a rounded, I guess half of an hourglass. 
just use the other color for the top and it sharpens that out a bit. You again is what you would expect. And I know that these are still, even though I'm able to round out the corners, these all still look a little blocky or block like. So if you wanted to, you could put flourishes on things, you know, add a little bit here if you like. Example. Uh, but whatever you like. This is just a sort of set of ideas. I think the V is sort of similar. Uh, so let's do a dark purple. I'll add one to one of these corners again so the point doesn't look quite as pointy. Uh, and if you like, adding a flourish to the V on one end or the other makes it a little less, a little less blocky. Okay, so let's go on to the next to do the last few letters. All right, so here comes the W. I'll add just another one in the middle here. Again, uh, to maybe make the bottoms a little less pointy, I'll add that dark purple right in the middle there. And a flourish here or there on either side could also be nice for this one too, I think. So I'll round out this corner. And now the X. It does look, again, in my mind, a little blocky, so I'll sometimes add a flourish to this one as well on either side. There you go. And the Y. We are almost done. Again, another one that could benefit from a flourish here or there. Oops. Here it is. Finally, the Z. Thank you for uh, sitting in. That was the whole 26 letters. Let's go ahead and put them out on display so you can see them as to how they would look on your pattern out in the real Animal Crossing life world here. Is the first set. I'm going to push this over so you can see it a little bit closer. And there you go. Here are the letters. And they look not too bad. Well, I hope you found these informative. I think that these will be great new ideas for you as you make your signs and your flags and other patterns in your custom designs. I hope that uh, you will find this useful as you continue on with your creative endeavors in Animal Crossing. Hope you have a good rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye.